it's Anthony Allen Ramos. All right, everyone. Fancy Haygood is an out and proud artist making big waves in country music. I'm such a fan. Brand new single, Bored, is out now. And you can also, of course, check out Fancy on the Apple Music Country Radio Show, Trail Blazers Radio. Fancy, how are you? I am so good. Thank you for having me. Congrats on the new single. I'm so, like I said, I've been like such a fan of yours. This is called Bored. And, you know, mm -hmm. is you've done some really fun stuff. And this single, I think, is is so great. But it's super impactful and it's very personal. I know it really just talks, um, you know, a lot of about your experience with therapy and getting on the other side of things. Just tell me a little bit about the song because I think everyone should give it a listen. Yeah, I wrote Bored um, in the pandemic, which... You know, I know, I know we're technically still in, but this was like peak of like quarantine where you couldn't leave the house. And I honestly was just bored, you know, I had not, I didn't have a lot going on and I was spending time with like all the same people over and over like every day felt like Groundhog Day. But at the same time, you know, I had just come out of a situation where I got hit by a tornado and lost everything in a tornado and then straight into the quarantine. So I was dealing with like so much self-reflection and just a lot of different things that I wasn't prepared for, honestly. And I, um, thanks to just a lot of kind people ended up getting a lot of therapy, uh, donated to me. And I just started like, you know, I went to the therapy sessions thinking I was going to like unpack this tornado situation that had happened only to get to therapy and find out I was the tornado. And there was so much more to unpack and so much I was just sifting through in my own life, in my own head, like things I haven't unpacked from when I was like, you know, a teenager in Arkansas, closeted, trying to figure shit out. And I realized that, you know, as a 30 year old male, I was still a little bit of that trapped person trying to figure stuff out. And so therapy really just kind of helped me start turning things around and realizing that a lot of what was going on in my life, a lot of the toxic situations, a lot of the you know, the patterns I kept finding myself in were my own, you know, my own doing. And it's, it's funny when you keep thinking the world's happening to you just to find out that you're happening to you. So Bored was really just like this song that kind of came from a lot of self-reflection, a lot of homework given to me from my therapist, shout out to Langerica, she changed my life. Um, a lot of homework that I was doing that really just changed the way I was living and changed the way I saw myself and the way I saw other people and um, I started putting boundaries up in a lot of situations that I had never had boundaries in and it really has changed things for the better and so bored was kind of like I wrote it at the precipice of like uh, I feel like kind of finding my my zen if that if you will I just kind of was existing in so much chaos all the time and I didn't realize that all of that chaos was self-inflicted and I wrote Bored at a time where I kind of felt like, wow, it, there's so much happening. There's so much going on. You know, you can do anything at the drop of the hat. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's so much access in this world. And somehow I'm still not happy. So the song just kind of came from a lot of self-reflection and honest conversations and putting boundaries up where boundaries were needed. And the song just kind of talked about all the things I was noticing in life, like, I was, you know, I was friends with in a really toxic situation with a friend and, you know, therapy helped me kind of change that situation. And then there's also the second verse is, a, you know, it talks about this girl who's always in the pageant, but she's not Miss USA. and She got the life that she imagined and now she can't escape. And that whole verse was kind of inspired by like the Britney Spears documentary that was on Hulu. I think it was like a, I forget who did that. Was it ABC News or something like that? Yeah, there but were a couple it, of them, but yeah. Yeah, that one like really hit me because I was just like, man, we're all chasing all these things that we really want and love. And then sometimes you get it and it's just careful what you wish for. You know what I mean? So that yeah. whole that verse was like kind of inspired by the Free Britney movement. But it's just kind of like I was just writing what was happening around me and what I was seeing with my own eyes and just kind of feeling for myself. It's like, like I said, there's just so much tangible things that are available to everyone at the through the Internet and we're so connected and yet so unconnected and um, plugged in and zoned out. It's very strange to me. And I know I'm a product of that. So I, I just wanted to write something that was just like real AF, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm so glad that you did because I think, um, you know, even for me, 
when you bring up boundaries, I find it sometimes so hard to say no to something. And I'm like, you just you saying sometimes you have to. I'm like, I just it's not good for me. Like I, I this is not a good situation. I have to say no. And I think for queer people, especially, like it's so easy just to get like sucked into things like that. So I think people will um not just people from our community, but beyond that um will hear your song and just be like, you know what? Like, yeah, I need to do what's good for me. And like, you know. Right. Well, I think as queer people, we've all become used to making ourselves uncomfortable for the sake of other people's comfortability. Mm -hmm. And that's something I've really had to wrestle with the last couple years of my life, especially, you know, going inward and like having to like be at home by yourself a lot. I started realizing the things that do make me comfortable. And all of a sudden these things that maybe I didn't understand that they made me uncomfortable and I didn't understand that I was like forcing myself to be something that I necessarily wasn't, but someone else needed me to be. I think when you're forced to like re-enter that situation when you haven't been in it for such a, for such a long time, it's polarizing. And I started realizing like, wow, I'm not this extroverted, like entertaining person when I'm not on stage, when I'm not on, like that's not who I am in my personal life, but yet all these people, I feel like all these people are requiring that person to show up. And it was really noticeable to me when I stopped becoming what other people needed from me, who my real, real were, you know what I mean? Like the people who saw me for who I actually am versus people who saw me for what they needed me to be for their comfort. Um, that's something I have cut out. I am no longer available for other people's comfort. I am here for me, myself and I, and my comfort. And um, you know what? Sometimes that means that my queerness is not going to make you comfortable. Sometimes that means that me existing, me uh, taking up space in this world, especially here in Nashville, is not going to make everyone comfortable. And I am okay with that because it's about me being comfortable. And I've existed in this world where it's about trying to make other people understand or, or, or allow other people to see me or deem me worthy of a record deal or deem me worthy of a publishing deal or you know, deem me worthy of superstardom. You know, my whole career I've been told you're not what a pop star looks like. This isn't what a country artist is. This isn't what this is. This is, you're not this, you're not that. And they're exactly right. I'm not this and I'm not that. I am me and I am 100% comfortable with that in my life now. And I think my whole career has been a, a journey of trying to find that balance of uh, being myself and being accepted. And now I'm to a point where I don't care about being accepted. I care about being myself. So at, at no um, expense to my creativity or my comfort anymore will I be anything other than myself. And we love that. And, you know, it's like, I, I was thinking, you know, my first job in the business was in country radio. And I remember being young and closeted and, you know, and I remember like literally being such a fan of country music, but thinking like, this isn't a place for me. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not, they're not going to like accept me. And, and, and I do think that, we are finally in a moment of change in Nashville um, and country music. I, you know, thinking about obviously your buddy TJ um, from Brothers Osborne and, you know, artists like Casey Musgraves being so supportive. Do you feel that Nashville is becoming this more inclusive place? Because, you know, obviously thinking about your Apple Music radio show, I just think that it feels like change is happening. Yeah, I think change is happening, but I think what I love Nashville. I have to just say that before I answer this question. I love it here. This is where I feel the most myself. I've lived in Los Angeles. I've moved there thinking that, you know, my big queer self was going to have this big epiphany about who I was and find acceptance everywhere. And to be honest with you, I felt more closeted in Los Angeles in the music industry than I ever have here in Nashville. But I do want to say, I think progress is being made. Um, but I don't think it's because of Nashville. I don't think it's because of the record labels. I don't think it's these, like, I, I think it's because what we're seeing for the first time ever in the history of Nashville is diverse artists stepping up to the plate and refusing to not be who they are. And, you know, I think it's a huge testament that someone like TJ Osborne came out of the closet and was able to say, this is who I am on such a large platform. He's able to win awards and kiss his boyfriend the same way artists have been able to kiss their wives or, you know, it's like, that's a beautiful thing to see. However, I want to know why there's not more openly gay 
artists signed to major labels in Nashville. I want to know why someone has to be already successful and already killing the game and already climbing that ladder and then come out and that's okay. Right. I want to I want to know why more major labels aren't putting more diverse artists on their rosters and pushing it because what we're finding out is we're not losing fans, we're gaining them. And we're no longer ostracizing these audiences that like you and I felt like there aren't places for us in country music. We're not going to be represented here, so we're not going to listen to it. What we're finding is, is there's more and more people who can appreciate a genre that has not appreciated them because more artists are stepping forward and being themselves and, and showing up in a way that they haven't been allowed to. They've been silenced for so long. But the thing about country music is it's about storytelling yeah. and how many stories are left untold because of, you know, black people not being able to share their art on, on the main stage, gay people not being able to share their art on the main stage. And it's different. And every time I have this conversation, you know, you always have these people being like, well, what about this person? And it's always women who are, you know, who are gay being thrown at me. And I'm like, well, I think that's a little bit more um, acceptable and, and always has been. I think it's easier. It's palatable. You know what I mean? It's, people can swallow that pill more so than if you put a feminine male on a roster with all these people, it suddenly becomes um, intimidating. It's, it's polarizing. It's, it's not a pill. A lot of people want to swallow but the thing is is I think what we're finding out and myself included like being on tour for the first time since 2015 and putting out an album that celebrates being queer and celebrates being southern a comment that I'm getting more and more is I'm not into country music but I love this album I'm not into country music but I loved your show I'm not into country music but this and the thing is is yes you are I'm you're very you much are, into yeah. It. yeah you're very much into it. You're just seeing yourself in it for the first time. And that's a beautiful thing. And I'm very proud to be someone who can allow other people to see themselves in a space that maybe they're not, they haven't been accepted in. And I'm here to say you are, you are accepted uh, and your story is worth being told. And I think it's because of the TJ Osborne's and the Casey Musgraves and the Mickey Guyton's and the Brandy Clark's of this world that more people are being brave enough to, to tell their story and to, keep fighting the fight and it's not an easy fight this industry is so crazy every day people are always like do you have any uh advice for up-and-coming artists and I jokingly always say don't do it <laughs> find another career yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah sell insurance <laughs> but it's just like I jokingly say that because it is so important for people to keep fighting and to keep pushing and to and to be seen regardless if people want to see you or not I I just watched this um show that Lizzo put on Amazon the other night and I was so inspired by it because you know Lizzo's queen of the universe now but it's like she had a rough road to getting there you know and hearing her talk about her experience on the show and her giving all these other big beautiful women who are large and in charge this platform to be themselves and to uh, it, it just show it was it was reminding me of when I used to watch America's Next Top Model and hearing uh, the panel of judges on that talking about people's bodies and how they need to, you need to suck in that gut or you need to like work on this or you need to do that and how that just hasn't aged well. And to see a show where Lizzo has nothing but big, beautiful, talented, inspiring women sharing their stories and being themselves and taking up space. And, and it was so inspiring to me because I, you know, I remember living in West Hollywood being told by record executives and A&R people that I was not a pop star because of the way I looked and I'm not this and I'm not that. And it's just like, I feel like we live in this space now where you can be anything you want to be. And it's not about, I, I feel like the mistake I made back in 2015 was believing what other people had to say about me instead of believing in myself, because it was my belief in myself that got me in all of those rooms that got me that record deal, that got me that top 40 hit, that got me on tour with Ariana Grande. It was my belief in myself. You know what I mean? And what, ha what happened along that process with so many people speaking their opinion into my life and me thinking, oh, well, they must know better. They, they do this for a living. This is what they do. They're going to get me to my ultimate dream. But the closer I got to that dream, the further I was away from myself. And it just wasn't gratifying. You know? right. I'm really excited to be in this space now where I don't have voices like that in my head because it's not important for me to have big managers and it's not important for me to be on a label. And it's not important for me to be anything other than what I said earlier, myself. And so I'm finally making art that matters to me 
and I'm finally making art that I think speaks to someone like me and that's what I make my art for yeah. and I think what we're seeing in Nashville is more people doing that and it just connects and it's like I know that like when I stumbled upon you um I was like this is like what I've been waiting for I was like I wish there was someone that was like amazing and just like fabulous and flamboyant and unapologetic in country and it was like so I know that others are feeling that too I want to talk about Casey though because she is getting GLAD's um, Big Ally Award this Saturday at the GLAD Media Awards in Los Angeles. I mean, I know you're pals with her. What is it like to be, you know, friends with her, but also to see her be such a, you know, loud and proud advocate, you know, literally from the beginning, you know, and just continue to use her influence to, you know, support us? I mean, uh, it's funny, I was just at lunch today with one of my other best friends and we were talking about this because it is so amazing. The, I mean, it's funny. It's almost like Casey's one of the most successful people in Nashville, in my opinion. And, you know, when you talk to all these like people in Nashville, what kind of careers they want to have. Casey's the first person that comes out of their mouth most of the time. Everyone wants that Casey Musgraves trajectory and career. And it was so crazy being at her. I, I went with her to her show in Atlanta for her last tour and it was an arena. And I, I, I'd, seen, I'd seen her at Bridgestone here in Nashville, but um, just going with her to that and sitting in the audience by myself and just looking around and like the crowd I saw, it makes me emotional. I could cry right now, but I just feel it's inspiring. You know, she's created this space and she's done it away from country radio. Like, it's not like she's been the most celebrated artist on radio. And right. mostly people have been, you know, telling her, like, this isn't how it's going to fly. And it's just really inspiring to me as an artist because I've been told those same things. And to see that happen on such a grand scale and to see someone you love and care for being celebrated in such a large way. But more importantly, seeing the people in her audience who feel like they can show up and be themselves and express themselves and I saw so much queerness in that audience. I saw so much uh, celebration of just being yourself and it, it just felt radical to me. And I just was so moved by that. And the most important thing, I'm a huge manifester. And I feel like when you can't see yourself in a situation, it, it won't happen. And seeing my friend on that platform in such a large way, it starts to feel tangible because you've seen all the no's that she's been told and you've seen all the ceilings that she's burst through and she's shattered and, and the support she's gotten for being who she is and, and standing up for what she stands up for. Um, it's really, it's really inspiring. It's really cool. But on a personal note, just as someone who's close to her, I'm so thankful for her friendship because she's a real friend. She is so thoughtful and kind and the way the way she makes her art is just very inspiring and i'm just i just feel so blessed to have a front row seat to that not only because of the success and the craziness but the the actual care that goes into all of it into her career and into her personal life is really inspiring for me and it's like having someone like that to look up to it is really cool no and i love that and i love to hear you know your your personal account cuz i mean i think she's you know, been such a, a trailblazer and, you know, just to, to be so unapologetically supportive of LGBT people is so great. But um, speaking of trailblazers, that leads me to Trailblazers Radio, which I'm yeah. like, so cool. Apple um, Music. And it's like, you do these really great chats. I know like Orville Pack's been on, um, TJ, of course. And I think you're doing them like every two weeks, right? Yeah, it's bi-weekly. I love it. So, I mean, what's it? I mean, I think also it's like that lends itself. I love that Apple is like, you know, we want to have fans. He have his own show. It's so good. Like, I mean, as you should, but I think, you know, what's it been like to, you know, to get this opportunity and this really great platform to have really fun, but also important conversations. Yeah, it's been incredible. I mean, I have to say it earlier, I was criticizing Nashville for not putting gay people on but I really want to hand it to Apple Music. They are putting their money where their mouth is. And that's what I want to see more of across the board. I want to see more industry making change because it's needed. And I am so proud to represent a company like Apple on Apple Radio because they're putting their money where their mouth is. And they are creating this diverse 
space for artists that don't necessarily fit in the format of country music. And to me, I think it's bigger than that. You know, I, but even before I had my own radio show, I'm an independent artist. I do not have a label. Um, I do everything in house and I have a team, a, a really amazing team um, and a label services that have really killed it for me. But it's really noticeable when a, when a organization like Apple steps in and supports you. And even before I had my radio show, Apple was putting me on and, and allowing me to exist in this space that for so long I was told I didn't belong in. And it's noticeable when that happens. And it's more noticeable when it's not just happening in June, when it's Pride Month and, you know, they need a token right. space to put on a campaign. You know, it's, they were putting me on January through December and playlisting my songs and giving me this space. And so when they asked me to have my own Apple radio show, it's a no brainer. Of course, I want to be a part of that. Of course, I want to be a part of this you know, movement of change and giving other people an outlet to like uh, digest music that maybe they haven't been given an opportunity to, you know? So it's just a really cool spot. I'm learning about new artists that I never even heard of. And it's just, it's a, it's a really inspiring place. I have loved doing it. It's been life-changing for me. Um, just even as an artist taking on this show, it's given me, you know, I'm independent, you know? So it's just given me so much more freedom to kind of exist in this world and to continue to compete and to continue to throw my my music in the world and be able to you know do all of it and it's just been it's just been so amazing I can't even believe that it's happened and it's just something I look forward to every single time we get to go record and talking to artists I'm learning so much you know it's you you forget about the hustle you know what I mean when people get to a certain point like with Casey and Orville and Brothers Osborne and um, I had a really great conversation. It hasn't come out yet, but I had a really great conversation with Shane McNally, wow. who is an yeah, who's an amazing uh, songwriter. And I mean, he does it all. He's a producer, songwriter, all of it. So, and you know, hearing his journey, it's like getting these are stories I don't really know, you know. So I'm I'm hearing it as other people are, and it's just inspiring because it's like I said earlier, the common thread I'm seeing in all these people is they've all been told the same thing. It's easier for people to be naysayers and kind of like, be like, well, I don't know. But then these people break through, you know, and they do it because they believe in themselves and they, and they don't take no for an answer. So it's just super inspiring as an artist getting to interview these other artists and creatives. And I love the show. Who's the dream get? Like, if you could just be like, you know what, tomorrow we're going to interview, who would it be? Oh man, there's so many. I have to say, I really want to interview Tanya Tucker. Oh, I love it. There, She was a part of this show on Netflix that I, I forget what it's called right now. And I hate that I did. It's like, but it's about pop culture and music and how, it, and they did an episode on country music and Orville actually hosted that. And um, Tanya Tucker, they were talking about her in the time of like, when she was really blowing up and how she partied just as hard as all the men and like it, it like tainted her career where with all the men it made her career their careers like it made them like badasses and they were amazing and they're outlaws and this and that but Tanya Tucker's doing all the same things and it made her like this like scarlet letter and she in the interview she she said uh and this is present day she goes yeah I had to quit wearing mini skirts because my balls kept showing and when she <laughs> said that I was like that is someone I want to talk to because you know she's still relevant Grammy like took home Grammys not too long ago it's so it's amazing. like but she's just she's still relevant and she's still just like killing it and I'm just like I'm dying to know I would love to talk to Reba Tanya Tucker Dolly because I want to know what it was like being a woman in this man's world because those are the the queens of country for me especially like Dolly or Reba like how did you exist and how did you become such a prevalent pop culture phenomenon in this male dominated world you know what I mean I want to know what that right. I want to know what that was like for them I feel like I, I've, I've got some friends that are in Tanya Tucker's world maybe I'll send them your way because I feel like it, we can make that happen um yeah she, tell Tanya to come party with Fancy on Trailblazers just radio oh I on will. Apple Music Country <laughs> that's right um but Fancy thank you so much for this chat and like I said everyone go listen to the new song it's called Bored it is out right now and then every two weeks, bi-weekly, Trailblazers Radio on Apple yes. Radio. We love it. 
Um, and I hope to get to see you at our New York award show. I, I've heard rumors that you might be coming. So hopefully uh, the Glad Media Awards in May will get to see us. Well, I love any excuse to get to New York. That is the truth. But hey, I, thank you for having me. I also just want to say thank you for everything that you guys do for artists like me and um, for the representation that y'all put into this world. It, it makes a world of difference. Awesome. Well, right back at you. So good to see you.